It is the Blue Room. It is Blue Monday. It is late on Monday, but we are here, Dave. We have managed to get together. And we're going to have a little chat about Everton. How did you enjoy your weekend without the Blues playing? It was really nice, actually. I, do you know, I, I was really uh, critical about the stupid uh, winter break that, like, everyone has theirs halfway through and then they do the half of it a week later. But I quite enjoyed this, to be honest with you. Um, because obviously across this period of the time, this period of the season, it's just it, it feels like a game every other week. Even for us, it feels like I was looking at it. We've got like something like silly seven, six or seven games in the space of like fifteen days or something like that. And um, it, it's nice, I think, as well, mate. That on top of that, we really need to break. I think Everton need to break. Um, given given the way in which things have happened, nice to get the win against Palace at home in the in the Premier League. Um, so you know we got out on a little bit of a high towards that break that we've had, um, and then you look at the weekend. It's still the FA Cup, which is quite remarkable. Really going from the third round to the fourth within the game. Uh, the game I can't, after. Was, I can't believe it's only the fourth round. It feels like we've been in it for like weeks and weeks. Yeah. Like, just, it what? does. Do you know what? I was only thinking: should you get a replay and win it? You should get put to the following round after that, so you don't have to play in the fourth. Should immediately go into the last sixteen. I just think um, it was like on a Thursday night and like. The whole stuff around Carver Lewin's red card and all the carry on after that, like it just feels like it's been going on for ages. And like, we're actually, yeah, we're actually, only in the fourth round, but yeah, like you said, at least at least we're still in it. We've got we've got Palace in a couple of weeks as well, haven't we? I feel like we play them every other week at the moment. Yeah, don't we? yeah, we've got um, Palace in four or five days. I think I think uh, Hodgson will be gone by then, though. Yeah, we've got quite a good record against them, haven't we? So I don't mind it it's yeah. so much, really. Um, at home as well. But yeah, it's uh, do you know what? Like. Uh, there was a point over the weekend when I was like, oh, I wish we were playing. Because, like, honestly, all the footage I watched over the weekend that was I thought was crap. Like, yeah. The Arsenal Palace game was just so one sided on Saturday lunchtime. The the Brentford game was just, I found that the whole Ivan Tony stuff just nauseating all the, yeah. the carry on around him. And it was obviously a good game in the end, but again, just couldn't really enjoy it because of all that. And then the Liverpool game was like awful first half. And then they just, Ran away a bit second yeah. half. It's like none of the games, like there's a lot of goals, but I don't think any of the games are like really that captivating. The only one I thought was decent was Sheffield United against West Ham. That was, um, good. I watched the last 10 minutes of that. That was good. Yeah, it just it just went a bit crazy to be honest with you. And um, but despite the fact that several, well, what are they nine points below us or whatever, <clears throat> still happy for them not to win to be honest with you, given we might get more points deductions or whatever ends up happening to us this season, but also the game itself. Um, it had pretty much everything VAR wise. It was quite fun to see Moyes absolutely yeah. flipping it, and we never really seen him do that, did we, back in the day? But to see him with his grey hair giving it loads to, to the to the officials and um, the way, the, ah, do you know what? Who can't stand as well that like with Bernie? I'm not stand him as a player, mate. I think he's, I think he, do you know what? Probably I'm stereotyping him here, but he's best mates with Joey Barton. I, I, I just don't. I just can't stand the lad, mate. Didn't he get he got done for assault or something as well? Didn't he several seasons ago? I mean, I, I mean, should probably say allegedly, but I don't know. Well, I was gonna, um, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Matt, I, I might have to take. I think, I think, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I probably go as far as to say he's been in a few scuffles. I think, hasn't he? Like, I think, yeah, he, oh, yeah, he's done. He's that kind of boy, mate. Comes on with like, comes on with small, small socks on and all that sort of thing. And then, of course, you talk about that. What, what happens in the end of that match when they get it back to two all? I actually thought there was a blatant foul at West Ham. Yeah, 100%. Their, their, yeah. their defender doesn't even look at the ball, just throws Bowen to the ground. And then that, that should have been a penalty as well. But yeah, let, just a long sort of answer to you. I think that was the only decent game of the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, was, I was resorted to watching some Spanish footy, which maybe we'll get into at the end. But um, yeah, from an Everton point of view, like a, a rare, quite a few days, really, in a bit of an oasis of harm in the the mad few weeks we've had, you know, in terms of on the pitch and off the pitch. Don't worry, mate, it comes back in a few days. Yeah, I do kind of miss the chaos, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> although, like, this time last week, well, after the point seduction, I came on here, I was ready to just give it all up for... Yeah, for the, mate. Um, I, I honestly, the, the, amount of, the amount of shit that we've had over the years since we've done the Blue Doom, and whenever, like, the last three years staying up and all that, I have to say, mate, between us, that that's... That's probably the lowest I've ever seen you yeah, um, when, when so thinking tired. about him. Would you would you agree with that? I was just so tired and like ill as well. So it, it all just kind of 
reached a crescendo. And then I did the Echo yeah. podcast the day after. I think I sounded even worse. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, yeah, quite, quite a few days for us, really. Not loads going on. Yeah. Um, the the big story really has been around Ed DeCorey, hasn't it? And I think it was uh, Fabrizio Romano who has been first to report a lot of the stuff around his contracts in the past. So he's, he's clearly got a, a, a connection there. Uh, with Decore's camp, kind of came out of nowhere that um, Jordan Henderson's departure. I mean, God could do a whole show on that mess as well. Yeah. Um, from Al Etifak is they're looking to replace him, and they've they've identified Decore and reached out for for talks. I think um, Joe Thomas has reported that everything, as far as they're concerned, about nothing official yet. Um, but of course, it, it it caused a bit of a panic in the on um. On social media over over the last week, um, I mean the general consensus, Dave, is that you know Everton could get offered a huge amount of money for this lad who has got you know eighteen months, I think, left on his current deal. Who is the other side of thirty now? Um, and in in another world where we're a stable football club, where we're we've not had ten points taken off, you could probably sell him, bank the money, and go and try and bring in younger players who who maybe could take this team forward for the next three to five years. But Everton are that football club, are they? So, unfortunately, no. uh, it just feels like one of them where unless the summer money is utterly ridiculous, I mean, just got to dig our heels in. I don't know. I, I, I slightly disagree with that. Um, I you, don't can't, think... you, can't, you cannot sell him at this point now, surely. Well... You look at where we are, uh, and I don't want to get too much in it because we can become sort of bogged down in talking about points and all that and appeals and things. But the fact of the matter is, we're smack in the in in the middle of effectively two appeals: one against the ten points we've already had deducted, and one um, ahead of what could potentially happen with what's going on with with Nottingham Forest as well. If it's just they came into all this, whilst we're still in that limbo, there is. There's plenty of reason and I think makes sense. And this is not a nice thing to say. And it's something I wish I never said. But are we in a position where we could turn it down is more the way I'd phrase it. And I don't think we are, Matt. I don't think we're in a position where we can turn that down, the financial but, but it wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't impact the current appeals in any way, would it? Because it's based no, on no, no. three I'm, 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 in the past. No, and I, I take that point. I think that's that's a really good point to make. Um and probably the most you know legitimate of them really. But I'm not talking about it in the sense that we could use that money against players, but I'm I'm thinking about, you know, you go far as back as Richarlison, big money, Gordon, big money. We needed that to put towards whatever <clears throat> it's gone to in regards to death or what whatever it is. Our financial place right now. We all don't know exactly what it is. Many, many people will who do that sort of thing as well, financial football experts. But it appears to me that we're in a position that, like, we would have got um, administration at that 10 points and never been done. All that sort of thing. All point towards seriously, seriously, like, fearful issues with our finance right now. I'm not so much talking about myself, I'm talking more about the club. If that gets offered, I don't think the club would turn it down. How much are we talking? Well, well, yeah. Well, what, think... what summer money would? Yeah. Well, there's two. There's two ways of looking at it, Matt. Like you've mentioned, there you've got 18 months left on a contract. Any other deal with a UK slash European club that'd be part of that saying, "Oh, we can. We're only going to give you this amount of money because you only got 18 months left on a contract." That's you know that's bread and butter for what happens with challenges. Uh, sorry, with, with, with references players, uh, people coming in to try and buy players. That's what we normally see. I don't think the the Saudi side of things with football really care about that. And with that in mind, that goes hand in hand where I said I don't think Everton can reject it because something silly is going to come in for it. I'm not talking like 100 millions and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm talking if we were offered in excess of 30 to 40 million. I don't think Everton in a position where they could turn that down. Would I personally want to turn that down? Absolutely. I love Decore. He's been such an important player for us for quite some time now. Not having him in the last couple of weeks of, of proven that, I think, as well, because he was a big part of the 
four wins on the spin that we've been referring to quite a lot this season that has effectively kept us out of the bottom three. Um, but it's it's sad to say, mate. I think there's just more ga- uh, more baggage to go along with um, Decore and what we could get from him more so than what we need him for. I mean, it's catch twenty two, isn't it? Because mm. not having him for the rest of the season, we're more likely to be in relegation trouble than we are if we have him. So it's a very and obviously I don't wanna I don't wanna praise them, but it's a very difficult answer to come. I hope Sean Dice is involved in this first and foremost, uh, in how this is dealt with. Um, because he's the most sensible person we have at the football club right now. Obviously you don't want this falling to the financial people that are there. Um that are well as as good as he could possibly be at his job. We don't know because he can't sign players these days, but um as long as it goes to somebody who's able to handle this efficiently. I mean, the other side of it as well, Matt, the, the, the sort of the third factor to this is look how, long, how long's left in this transfer window. If this is guaranteed to happen, it's got to happen in the next couple of days. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's guaranteed to happen by any means. Like, if no, they, I, don't I, think, I don't think it's guaranteed. I mean, I've, I've yeah. just been sort of going around the houses of why I think it could potentially happen. It feels like it probably won't happen. I don't want to, you know, touch wood here saying that. Like, it... It feels like reports would have progressed more from last week if, if this was going to be a thing. Um, but I don't know. Like, he's probably one of two players I'd say this month that, I, like, in the entire squad, I'd dig my heel and dig my heels in and say, "Can't sell him." And the other one's the goalkeeper. Like, I, I think anybody Virginia. else, like, ever... <laughs> maybe, yeah, top class now, um, But if, I think if we got offers for anybody else, reasonable. And like, I mean, even even Brantwaite, if someone comes in and says. You know, eighty million pounds for him. Then you'd have to, you'd have to seriously consider that. That 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 is that is a crazy amount of money for a lad. He was absolutely brilliant, but has got a a very short um catalog of good Premier League appearances. Like, doesn't mean I'm not the rain doesn't mean I don't think he's going to go to the very top. But that that is serious money we'd have to consider. But no, I know what you mean. It's it's a history of football. Just quickly, it's a history of football. That's where you get world class players. They they make it for two years and then either fall fall apart in terms of injuries or. Just fall away, and and yeah. that happens in football, and, doesn't it? It's no guarantee, is what you're saying. And like we we have got like the the nowhere near that level, but we have we have got other central defenders, like we have got Keane and we have got Godfrey, and like I'm wincing myself saying that, thinking about them playing regular games, but we have got bodies who can play in that position and do okay. I was going as far as saying that they they could do okay at times. Do a job. We're being, we're being generous. The court when when the core is not there, that this whole thing just falls apart, doesn't it? And like you only need to look at the record of Everton with Decore in the team compared to about Decore under under Sean Dyche. I think Fairs sorry, um Wednesday's game against Palace was the, the first time we've won under Dyche without Decore in the starting eleven. Yeah. That, that, I like that was a slog, wasn't it? That wasn't like a, a convincing win when we looked at yeah. it. Was, it was one kick of a football. Have decided it between two teams who are probably quite as bad as each other on the night. He, he's just so integral to, to all of this. And I think as much as you could sit there and you could, you know, you could go through all the reasons why in normal circumstances it didn't make sense to sell him. It, it'll be an inflated fee. He's 31 now. He's getting a few injuries here and there. He's always been quite a, an injury prone player, hasn't he, up until recently, but they're starting to creep back in again now. Um, you could invest it in other parts of the squad, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but I don't think any of that offsets the potential financial catastrophe we could face if we if we went down effectively. Because if it, you know, I've, I've I've been adamant, haven't I, on these shows we've done? Like, I don't think we're we're in a releg. Well, at the moment you look at the table and we are in a relegation battle, but I don't think we're going to be in relegation trouble come the end of the season. If he but goes, that's a big part because of him, no man. Yeah, if, if he goes, I mean, you look at his you look at he's been scoring one in three effectively from attacking midfield for a team that have been almost. Exclusively, excuse me, around the bottom three since the last year. Like that, that that is an incredible feat when you when you think of it like that. So I think he's the most important player we've got at the football club, and in this era where Everton are living hand to mouth, living season to season, game to game, trying to just scrape through and keep their head above water, I don't think he can afford to to let a player like that go. And um, obviously, if huge money comes in. If the player agitates for it, which I don't necessarily think he will. I think he, he seems quite settled. Um, yeah. He seems to like the manager who's obviously come in and revived his career since um, Lampard has gone. Um, so I don't I don't think it will happen. Um, 
in the summer, maybe it's an entirely different story. I, I'm, it was still a Premier League team, and they come back in for him now. But I think right now, um, the idea of watching Everton without him for the rest of the season is um, would be a big concern because you don't know where that money's going to go. And listen, Dave, we could have, we could have the best scouts on planet Earth, but going and finding a midfielder now who yeah. fits the way Dice plays, who scores one in three, who knits everything together in the unorthodox way that he does, it's it's close to an impossible task, I think. Where do you put Dice into all this, though, Matt? Because, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe... I don't, really think, I, don't, that... I don't really think he'd have much of a, a say. If, if so, if... No, no, I don't mean that. The, the, the side of it that I was going to say was, if, with him being out for such a long time now, is the responsibility for Dice to try and source it out? As in, has he has he done anything? I said done anything. Is attempts to get somebody else in who can do what the core does. Do you have any qualms with that in how he's tried to do it in the way he wanted he the has from done you, it? He wanted the lad from United, didn't he, Hannibal? But he's obviously yeah. gone to Sevilla, who lost five. No, no, well. I mean, I, I just mean in, in who we have now on that squad. No, there's no it, one, is there? That's what I mean. So it's it's where he's he's caught in between with all this because. You know, you can look at players you could potentially... Dan Hume is the only one, really, who he probably considered somebody you could put in there. Let's face it, the lad's, the lad's not going to stay at Everton, certainly be on this season. Um, I think he's got bits and bobs about him, but he's certainly not a player you want to be in your first eleven. But out of where he plays, I can't really think of anybody else who put in a role that is similar to Decore. So that's going back to what your initial question about him. I think that's where he's absolutely essential for him. And I think, you know... If we get, if when we're doing the show, what is it? When when did it become February first? Is it next week? Mm, yeah. Next Thursday, is it? Yeah. yeah. If we if we're still doing this the Monday after that, maybe we've still got the core day. Um, I I I'd be happy, but I don't think it's a guarantee. Yeah, might be one of the simmers between now and the end and the window, but I I reckon he'll be here. Um, hopefully. And um, back sorry. as well, by the way, back on the team, back in the team, back playing. Yeah, well, it, it's what the classic one, wasn't it, when he was asked about his injury? I don't think he gave much away, but um, maybe we're quite lucky that we've had that break during this latest injury yeah. because, you know, we, if we'd had a couple of games in that that, that time period, then it's going to be it'd be tough for us. Like, yeah, I think he just, like, I think he, even against Villa, like, I, I don't think he had an amazing game to call it, but you could just see the, the difference he made to us that day. Just, yeah. I mean, just off the ball, he does so much good work as well. Like in terms of the press and keeping the shape, whereas you know when Gomez is there, he can't cover the ground well enough. I think when when James Garner has been pushed forward into that position, he's he's a bit more headless chickeny with his running round and pressing. Like the core, he seems to know when to go, when to stay. And like I, even that, even the goal that was disallowed against Villa, you know, how well did he take that? Like, I, yeah, you know, I, I don't think anybody else really is is that clinical in front of goal for us at the moment. So. It would be a, a big blow if we lost him. Um, just one, another player we said we'd speak about as well. You just mentioned there. Uh, we, we spoke about him a bit on the instant reaction after the the Palace game, but but Jal Virginia. Um, it's been really it's been really nice to see him see him come in and, and see some of the interviews he's done over the last few days. He you know he said openly that he thought he was going to be leaving, and then obviously Begovic goes and and Everton say you know you're going to be the the number two, and, and it sort of felt like he said in his interview that it felt like a big step up for him because he's he's been around other clubs, he's been out on loan. Not quite settled anywhere, but um, just I think Dave probably the biggest compliment you could pay him is that in both of those games against Palace, like I didn't really notice him until you had to notice him. If that makes sense, like he yeah, just did yeah. all the things that goalkeepers should do routinely, and then when he was called into action to make saves, he was he was just there, and it's um you know a bit of a gamble maybe in the summer not to go and get a, a more experienced, established backup keeper like we've had down the years, you know Begovic. <laughs> Carlo Nash and the likes that have been here. Um, but he looks very, very competent, doesn't he, from what we've seen? Yeah, he grasps those opportunities with both hands, I think. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. There's an irony to it, but as long as you don't know who your goalkeeper is, I guess that's why you've had a decent, you, you've probably had a good result, um, unless you're blaming them for making a massive mistake, which he's looked solid. Um, distribution looked fine. Um, you know, it, it's it's a big thing that I think it goes by the wayside for many fans when you see this sort of thing. But Jordan Pickford, even though he's a goalkeeper, even he's a human being and still needs some sort of time out himself. Um, you know, you, you've got a lad who's crucial to us as well, the England number one and all the other um, accolades you can talk about with, with Pickford. He still needs to have some time away from it, especially when there's such a rush of games coming up. 
especially with it being the cup competition as well, Matt. Now, this is quite funny because I used to flip it when Moyes had put a side together where you'd have any other goalkeeper and you'd be feeling it, fielding uh, an, 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 an outwill 10 with, let's face it, squad players as opposed to the best you possibly can. Nowadays, um, I'm, I'm fine with it, to be honest with you, because I think, I've, like I've said, quite a while, but the, the, the bread and butter is the Premier League right now. Um, you know, if, you, if you'd ask me that question, which I think you're probably doing as, as we finish the pod in a minute, um, would, they, would they want us to win this against Luton? Given the fact we've got... Uh, I'm generally, generally leaning towards your side now, like you said, when we finish the pod um, on instant reaction, that it's go, f- you know, full out for the FA Cup. Just go for it. Throw everything you can at it. Now, whilst I agree with that, and have the season where it's... When's the last time you've had a season where there's a bit of joy, you know? I, I, I get you that side of things, but um, look, I'm not going as far as saying we have to ask that question, would you rather take the FA Cup or would you rather guarantee that you're still in the Premier League? Obviously, we're not at that stage here. But um, I, I think that with that in mind... You keep him as the goalkeeper for these games. I think he's earned it. I think if you get to the the latter stages, I think that's where there's a real question for Sean Dice. Is that when you put Pickford in? But by no, you know, by no means is that a slight against the lad. If he keeps a number of clean sheets when he is put in the side, who knows? It could be in the Premier League as well if Pickford's injured or anything like that. It looks like we've got a really reliable um, second goalkeeper there, which is something we. Have. Can't remember us having one to be honest with a couple of the names you've just mentioned there. Yeah, I like his black gloves as well, just like all black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not like very flashy. It's, fans. it's like it's like the it's like the outfield equivalent. I know, I know goalies wear boots as well, so this might sound a bit stupid, but like it's the outfield equivalent of like a player that just, just wears like black boots. Yeah, nothing, it, nothing flashy. Well, I know we want to have a quick word on him, but Gomez. Gomez always wears black boots, and I, I do like that. It's proper throwback stuff these days, unfortunately. I know players just always want to look the part. Does me head in with anyone, does that little cut on the back of the socks as well. I'm like, what are you playing at? Why yeah. are you doing that? And I'm Stay sure they'll come out with some reason. Like it, it means that me it doesn't hurt it, me calves don't have much chance of getting hurt or something like that. Which is complete ludicrous. But yeah, I'm a big fan of the stealth black of uh, Virginia in goal. Absolutely. And you mentioned Gomez there and just sort of looking ahead. I already look ahead to, to next week. It's, it is a busy one. We've got Luton on Saturday, full and midweek away. And then it's Spurs, isn't it, in the early kickoff on the Saturday again at, at Goodison, which should be an interesting game. Um, Gomez, you mentioned there, he's going to play a part, isn't he? How, how do you think he'll use him over the next the next week or so? It sort of feels to me like the, the, the Cup game, I think he'll probably start that. Um, maybe have another look at him in that number ten position, and then it won't surprise me if he's just sort of managed and and nurtured a little bit through the the next two in the Premier League. You know, I, I could easily see us going to Fulham and playing a bit more defensive. Hopefully not, but maybe like it won't surprise me if we went like back to the back five, or you see maybe Harrison coming into that central position and, and playing behind the striker. But but Gomez yeah. is going to have a role to play, isn't he, over the next next week or so? I think he'll, he'll definitely start one. He'll feature in the other two. He'll come on off the bench, I think. Could possibly see him. He'll rest him at Fulham, maybe bring him back for Spurs. Um, I think that could see that happening. But I think definitely against Luton, you're right. I think he's going to start that game. Probably one of the first uh, players on the on the team sheet. Um, you know, when when his Everton career ends, and we don't know when that could be, you know, winter or whatever. Uh, sorry, in, in the summer or whatever. It's going to be in the um, summer, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah, contract, yeah. Isn't he? yeah, yeah. Uh, is his contract up then? Is it in the summer? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's had the most uh, peculiar of contracts with us. Sorry, careers with us since he's been there. Adored probably too much when he's hugging people for charity and. Um, various things he does with his hair, his hair, all of that stuff, a lot of crap for me. And it certainly should be now for everybody, given how crucial our matches are these days. I looked at the way he played, though. And do you know what? The only thing that lacks him for being a really, really top class player that would never be at Everton is a bit of pace because he's so slow. And I mean, I mean that in a literal sense. I know we're talking about Premier League players here who should be at least be able to, to, to sprint, but. The lad needs a 
almost like a square ten yard area where he has to operate. Otherwise, if you're asking him when the other player, the other team turns around, you're not you're not getting him heading back. You're not getting him trying to keep um, next to an attacking midfield player from another side. And that's the real difficulty. It's a real shame, really, because he's. Um, I think he's more of a luxury player, and you know, which again is difficult to say given he's been out so much and he's been away from the club on loan. But he is, and I don't think that I trust enough the people in and around him that makes him a permanent and a regular player in the eleven. Um, I don't, I don't think I say trust the wrong word. I don't think he's got the capability of being somebody you trust as much as everybody else around him. And it's obviously going to be Onana. Um, and you know we haven't seen a dresser for months either, have we? Um, well, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe may, maybe he comes in at some point and has a point to play there, but um, that that midfield area is crucial. There. And, and, and I, I'm thinking it does it affects Onana as well and the role he's playing in that because you no know, one as, as a bog stand, but uh, bog standards and end to end midfield player for us. I, I'd like to see him more. In, in, in a stricter role in that midfield, given when we go away from home as well, when we don't have as much as the uh, as much as the ball, that's probably a little bit more tailor made for Gomez. If you're going away and you don't have much possession of the ball, he's somebody who can retain possession. He's got a great pass on him, and he, he he he's happy to pull out a, a little trick or two in midfield that keeps you the ball. He works hard. Don't get me wrong, mm. he's slow, but he works hard and um. I, I think he's a big. He's got a big, big part to play for us, and um, whether that's FA Cup or whether that's the league, I think he's still going to play a lot. Hmm. I, I don't think you'll ever see him play as one of the two deeper midfielders. Oh, he won't be fair where, starter. No, no. I, I, I think the only. I think the only time you see him play is one of the deeper two midfielders where Anana and Garner play is when we're chasing the game, like ever two down, or God, God forbid, <clears> we're three 0 up and he wants to make some changes, which. You know, <laughs> Everton scoring three in a in a game uh, feels a long way off at the moment. But I, I think we'll exclusively see him playing as a ten when the match is on a, a knife edge. Because, like you said, he, he's not got the the legs to get around anywhere. And I think I mean that's what made him such an exciting player when he was a when he was at Valencia in Spain and why Madrid and Barca both wanted him because he had all the technical ability, but he had that. He wasn't he was never fast, but he, he had that sort of shift where he could just get. Get a get a yard and just get past the player. Yeah. And he had that little little bit burst of acceleration that made him really effective. You know, he played out wide quite a lot when he when he was in Spain earlier in his career. Yeah. So um but he listen, he's he's here, he's got a few, a few months left, and because we said it, it's hard for us to turn our nose up at, at any football that have got the the kind of quality that he that he's still got. It's it's still there as we saw in the game against Spurs, as we saw. It is sad as well. Though. It is sad as well. Matt to, to get a job. <laughs> he's, exactly. he's got to get a, a new a new club. If he's he's got to play for that, the very least. And often, that's when you get the best from a player when they're desperate. And then the thing, the, the, the sort of the age old thing, you get to the end of the season and think, "Wow, didn't he play well? He was, he's brilliant. He's been our best player for the last five months. We need to give him a new contract." Well, he, I hate that thought of players, but it still does happen. He definitely still. You could see him going to Spain, Italy, France, where he was last year, and still. Being effective, like yeah. how old is he now, Matt? Oh God, I'll, I'll guess about twenty nine, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think he's closing to the end of his twenties, definitely. But he's he, he he's still got the awareness, and still got the technical ability, hasn't he? Like the, the the one thing which, like you've said, which is his kryptonite, is the pace of the game, isn't it? Yeah, he's thirty now, so like the pace of the game in the Premier League is is so much quicker than those leagues but those leagues are so much more technical than the Premier League so yeah. you could go there I think that's probably why he did well in France last year um, yeah. so we'll we'll see on that but you know maybe in a similar way to what Yerry Mina did last season where you know it's, it's one one last hurrah um, yeah. before, he, before he wraps up his keep his up when you've got by him give him a few hooks then Oh yeah, I, I've I've always liked going. I, I, well, might be biased because I've got a signed shirt by him upstairs in in my study. Oh yeah, well, how did you get that? So I got so um, my groomsman got it for me as a present before the the wedding. Oh, so it's a brilliant. it's a Portugal shirt. It's a white Portugal shirt. It's got it's amazing that two, two mat all the best from Andre twenty one underneath. Oh Portugal mate, that's underneath. lovely. That I like that. Yeah. I like that sort of thing. You know, it's good. It's good. And yeah. then whenever when he went terrible. It was, Every time I was on one of these, burn it, try to burn it. Yeah, when, 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 when he went terrible, every time I was on one of these with Mosey, he was like, "Can't believe you still got that shirt up." He's shite now. But listen, it's back <laughs> up. It's back up. He's having a renaissance at Everton, yeah. and 
Um, you know, European Championship winner as well, 2016 Barcelona player. Yeah. Andre Shea has to be hung up in ours Yeah, with pride. Uh, for as long as I'm allowed it to be there. Um, he jumps just, up and down on it when he's... Uh, if we get relegated, he scores no goal, mate. Ah, uh, it's not his fault. Not his fault. <laughs> I'll always stick up for Andre. Uh, just before we wrap up, Dave, <laughs> any any football over the weekend that caught your eye? Uh, well, I've, got a, cu- I've really got a couple, uh, both from Spain. Uh, Real Madrid, 3-2 winners, weren't they, against Almeria in a very controversial game. They scored in the 99th minute. Yeah, a winner. Bellingham scored two goals and, and set one up. Um, he is absolutely ridiculous. He's got fourteen goals in the league already. Yeah, it's ridiculous if you look at his record. He's better than one and two uh, across full competitions. I mean, you know, is he the best player in the world at the moment? I mean, it's hard to dispute. It's certainly an argument. It's hard to dispute it as well. I think, um, Particularly a, a midfielder who's scoring better goal rates than a striker. He's top score, joint top scorer in the Spanish league. Yeah, I mean that that's we that, that sort of rule that, that that sort of rule, that sort of thing doesn't happen. It does not happen. In fact, I can't remember when that sort of thing happens. It's not like we're talking about number ten either. We're talking about a midfielder that has absolutely everything in his game. Um, I, I initially when he went to Madrid, I had a little few doubts about him going there so early and. Because he was buying a trade at Dortmund superbly well. I'm glad he went to there because his dad or someone's a Liverpool fan, but I don't think they could have, even they couldn't afford him anyway. But he's not going to be leaving. He's going to be like Zidane uh, was at Madrid. Um, you could never see him leaving there. And if he did, you could never see, you could only see Manchester City affording to get him. You're talking about, you're talking about like, you know, the, the most expensive player you could get in the game of football. You're already saying that about the lad now. He must be the most valuable player in world football now. Because yeah, oh, he, he's still he's still only 19, 20, isn't he? And he's yeah. like he's like you know, we're talking about him as potentially the, the best player in the world. You he's already about... at Real Madrid on like a massive contract already. Well, <laughs> like Yeah. Well the irony with all that as well is that they're still after trying to get Mbappe. I mean, you can imagine that he's like playing FIFA if you've got Bellingham and Mbappe and Mbappe there. Vinicius I mean, Junior yeah, as well. I think but with him, sorry, you. They have got Vinicius Junior as well, haven't they? And yeah, I mean, he's ridiculous. Team. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's pointless. It is like playing football manager or FIFA, isn't it? When you see that sort of thing. But I think you're right, Dave. You you picked those three. Let's say for argument's sake, you've got Mbappe, Vinicius, who played the top two world class players just at the top of your head. Um, you know, add to Haaland that, onto that. I think you. It's it is a real argument to say he's at least second out of those three. I probably bought Haaland as the top of that list right now, but we're talking about a nineteen-year-old kid who's already there. It's uh, it's madness, and I think you know not not too much of in international football, but the way he is could go. They could go and win England something. He's that good. He could go and be the difference of England winning a an international tournament, a World Cup, a Euro, whatever it is. Um, he he's he's magic, and he's he's really good to watch. And it sounds obvious. He's really good to watch in terms of what he does. His movement, the way in which he controls the ball, his finesse, he has everything. And I don't know how, because he's just rocked up a lad from Birmingham. He's, and then he's been really good there. Didn't he retire his shirt as well? At yeah. He's like 17. Rocks up at Dortmund, and then you're seeing him at the best, the biggest club in the world, arguably. Just an a, a unbelievable player. And, and yeah, I mean, it's a shame we don't like, uh, we don't have Revista on the sky anymore, mate, because yeah. he'd just be raving about him. Wouldn't mind having Scott Minto talking about him every week. Yeah, Terry Gibson <laughs> with the, the tap ass yeah. in front of him. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bal- Balagay there as well. But the other, I remember the other player there as well, uh, Martial or something. Anyway, uh, my my point of the week going back to what happened, the, the VAR issue that they had at uh, Sheffield United. Uh, that, yeah. that last decision there was just incredibly bad because you look at the ones that, and it was actually, pains me to say, it was it was efficient. VAR was efficient to that point. Um, penalties were given, free kicks were given in the right place. I, I didn't get to the end of that game until that point thinking, this has cost that game. And that's the best you can get from it these days. And it's rare. But when that defender turns, doesn't even look at the, the corner that comes in and just pulls ball into the ground. He didn't even go and look at it, Matt. They didn't look at it. And I don't I don't understand them. Right. We're talking about relegation. I know Sheffield United are probably going to go anyway. 
even if the three if you got three points. But you don't have any faith. I mean, they didn't have any faith for a while, but when you see that, it's it, it, you're talking about clubs life and death with football clubs and all that. How how the firstly the ref was in a great place, by the way. If you look at it, mm. about five yards next to it. Doesn't blow a whistle and then VAR doesn't even interfere. I have no idea how that happens. And one point I'd make against Villa, I don't know if I mentioned this, but did you see it or have you seen the replay of it where they actually showed footage of the referees in Stockholm? Um, yeah. yeah. Was that by mistake? I don't know why that's happened just once. And then I'm trying, to human, Paul, trying to humanize them. Yeah. Look like Paul Feeney and his mates waiting for a pint at the bar. It was. It was- <laughs> I can't believe that happened. I was like, "What? Where's this come from?" We should we should also probably mention as well the most pathetic thing I think I've ever heard in football, and that was Forrest right into the PGMOL because Ivan Tony moved the ball <gasps> half a yard to the right. Was it? I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ! I mean, how how? Uh, I'd I'd like to think, Dave, even if this was Everton, we would be sitting here going, "Oh my God, grow up." You yeah. cry babies. That is oh, yeah. that is one of the most embarrassing things I think I've ever heard. And like, I felt I felt like. I don't know if it's just like a bit of a culture at that club, but like I felt like Steve Cooper used to just whinge about referees all yeah. the time, like to, to an embarrassing level. But but that, my God, you, you had 11 players on the pitch looking at and him taking it. Like, why didn't someone just go and move it if it was that big a deal? It was absolutely more importantly, more importantly, it was a shit free kick. Oh, yeah. It was like terrible he should ball. not have scored. He should not have scored, and he didn't score by the fact he moved the ball. But the other thing as well, like, you know, you can't call this PGMOL with that with. Throw-ins, people like step forward. Every every player steps forward like three or four yards with a throw-in. Any free kick, just put it down and play it. Oh, I mean, I I don't like him anyway. Not not because of what he why he got his eight month ban and all that sort of thing. But to start to start kicking off if you're um, if you're not a good forest. Then again, may as well be doing the same thing if they're the nine points as well. <laughs> not for that. Not for not for something like that. Mike, I'll be annoyed no. at us for for letting them do it. Like yeah. that's that's the classic. Like someone tell the like get the referee and go. We just move that. Yeah. Especially when like oh, the you... actual foam is yeah. there, you can see. Foam. Oh, God, just the foam bad. though, actually relying on foam. Um, yeah, it's just it, it is it is just crazy, isn't it? The maybe just like, like maybe just like the the forest like communications team. Dave like, were a bit like me this time last week, and they like just had a shocking week. The heads were fried because of the PNS. <laughs> ruling and they've just gone a bit mad on Saturday night and thought oh everyone's going against yeah. us let's write a letter to the PGML this is a great decision and then <laughs> the next day they wake up and go mm, yeah maybe yeah, not the absolutely. best move um, yeah right yeah. we'll wrap it up there anyway uh, cheers for everyone for listening loads votes, coming up this votes, week votes 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 yes, uh, so we've got subs coming up tomorrow uh, that's just me and Paddy for now working on getting a third we've got weekly which you'll be doing Dave we've got weekend preview we've got another Old, new, borrowed, blue. Uh, like I said last week, if you haven't listened to Adam Sutton's one, do go and listen to it. Absolutely magnificent yeah. from Adam and Les. And of course, all your stuff over the weekend as well. Uh, if you watch us on YouTube, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you do about the core. Eh? How much would you sell him for? Or is it just absolutely not? Get lost. He's going nowhere. The other thing as well, as Dave rightly mentioned in there. Come on, Dave, do you want to explain this? Actually, you know more about yeah, it than me. So. Yeah. So um, we we've been quite honoured to be um, in the selection in the uh, in in the um, in the votes for the sports podcast of the UK, uh, generally the sports awards. For that, uh, we're honoured to be in the uh, qualification. The qualifications. What, what am I talking about, Matt? Uh, Nominations vote, shortlisted for the award. The yeah. Qualification yeah. for it anyway. Yeah, shortlisted, and we're up against nine others. We're up against some big. Big, big, big places that uh, are well funded by companies and all that. By no means, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here crying and saying, make sure you vote for us because we're skinned. The, the athletic that, so. podcast, basically, aren't they? So, about- two, two athletic podcasts are against us. You've got a lot of parties And you've got some of that NFL stuff that you like as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're very much the, the underdogs, I think, anyway. So, please go and vote for us. I know many of you have already, and we can't thank you enough for that. Go and vote for us. The link is always on. Our Twitter, um, I'll keep tweeting it. Matt will and everybody else will associate it with us because it's a, it means a lot to us to go and get something from that. Because, well, years and years and years, Matt, we've been um, going to these things, haven't we? And trying to be in, and we have in this sort of thing. So, please go and vote for us. And um, yeah, we find out a thing on the second of February whether we've made it or not. 
yeah i'll put the link in the description of this podcast or youtube if you're watching it on that so uh, do all those things uh thanks for your patience there while we rattle off a load of plugs but it's always appreciated uh we'll be back later in the week have a good one up the toffees